into the new year with new Gundam. <laughs> I love that play on. You guys are brilliant for coming up with that. What is up guys? Welcome back to Hobby Vault. My name is Skylar and let's just get right into the video. I am bringing out my beloved MG 1100 New Gundam. This is the older one. It came out in 2000. It's not the one that a lot of people like, but I personally like the aesthetics of it and a whole lot of other things about it. So I'm just gonna show you exactly why I find this guy to be super unique. I started him a while ago uh, and I only got as far as his chest piece and his head. Now I would show you, <laughs> I would show you his head put together, but <laughs> as I was getting ready to film, and I was gonna put his head on right here. See those little white joints right there? They were holding a PC joint. And as I went to put the head actually on the body here, it, they broke. They, they went, they broke, or they broke the other way. They broke completely back the other way. And they are currently sitting with what I believe is the holy grail for fixing all Gundam pieces. Uh, Tamiya cement. So I have a couple of videos on that if you want to see it, but I need to remake a video on how to fix parts. But 95.8% <laughs> of most of your broken pieces on Gundams can be fixed or model kits can be fixed with uh, Tamiya cement. But yeah, that's why the head is not put together. It's because right there, it literally, it just said, nope, I am out. So number one, this kit is 20 years old. <laughs> literally 20 years old, about to be 21 years old. So it's plastic is very brittle, very fragile, and I am anticipating a lot of repair work on it as I continue building it for this series. But enough about the bad parts. First of all, let's compare it to what the MG Verka is. For this kit, there is this MG1100. There's several other iterations of it, but the main ones are this guy, the MG Verka that came out, I believe in 2007. Of course I have an SD version of it as well. And then of course there's the RG that recently came out with the full expansion kit and everything. Have not built that one yet, so I might pick that one up. If you guys wanna see that one or whatever, let me know. Now, let's show the comparison between this MG and the Verka MG. Now, it may not seem like a whole lot, no, hold on. Let me correct myself. It does seem like a whole lot because the MG Verka is highly detailed. It's just, it looks like an overall better kit. But I think the funnels look better on mine and I kind of like how it looks more clean and more realistic to the actual anime. So I like contrast, I like smooth lines. So I like this one, but she's gonna be a pain in the butt to build. First of all, let's talk about how awesome this box art is. It's literally so cool right here on the side. There's something about these years of kits that I just really like the way that they actually did the box art, the way that they put everything on the side. I, I just, I love this year. I love like 2000 to like 2008. Like I love everything that they did in that year. I'm, <laughs> that is a hot take and I'm sure someone's gonna be like, what's wrong with you? But I happen to like them. Not only is the box art really cool, but I'm a fan of how the manuals look for these years too. They have way more artwork in them. They have a lot different way of showing you exactly how to put the pieces together. A Little bit more straightforward, even though they're just as complex as today's kit. And I don't know, there's just something I like about these years, this aesthetic, these kits. I think they're all really cool. But let me show you the coolest part, the part that I'm excited for. This bad boy comes with metal parts for its actual skirt unit and its legs and they're highly detailed. Not only that, tell me that's not cool to look at it actually, like tell me this doesn't look cool just in general anyways. Like that's really neat. So I just wanna show you that. Not only does it have metal parts, it also has screws. You know that screws are kind of a pain in the butt. There's several kits that have them, but they're a pain in the butt so this will either be really fun or really awful. I only got to the actual chest unit and I'm, I have a feeling that this little frustrated nub removal mark right here <laughs> might be why I stopped building it. Uh, it was a while ago, I did stop building it. I'm not exactly sure why, but it stopped being built. But this plastic, literally, it's so fragile. It comes off 
literally I'm trying to show you that it comes off easy. It really does. It falls right off and it has to be glued down. So that's one part. I don't know if I'm going to paint this, but we'll get into the decals in a second. You can tell that the num marks are just absolutely insane. They didn't undergate anything as you, you wouldn't expect anyways, but literally it, they're in the worst possible spot. They're chunky pieces of very brittle plastic and it's just basically doesn't bode well for getting clean lines. So Hmm. Again, it's probably gonna get painted, but we will see. Amaro is right there in the inside in the cockpit and we're almost done with this. So I think that when we start building this, we're gonna start with putting the shoulders on and we're gonna work on the skirt pieces so that we can actually see the metal pieces. And my intention is to get this bad boy done by the new year. Uh, so let me get into the decals and let me ask for your opinion. I was thinking, I just love these decals. I think they're highly contrasted. I think they're really neat. They're nice decals. I I think I'm just gonna use these. However, do you think the better option would be to just go ahead and get the Verka and use the Verka decals on that? Or should I get the Verka decals to put on this guy? Let me know what you think. I'll put them here. They're from Simp. I know a lot of people like to laugh at the name, but they're from Simp and they're one of my favorite decal people. So. Check that out, comes in metallic and regular coating. What do you think would be best on this guy? Now, let's just check out a couple of the runners really quick, and I want to talk about how the funnel design on this kit is way better, in my opinion, than the MG Verka. I like the looks a lot better of the funnels on the back of the MG1100 over the Verka, so that's one of my, like, number one reasons for liking this kit over that one. Something that's easily fixable, but I just think this kit is more aesthetic looking than what they did here. I don't know, what's your opinion? And then this will be it for all of the white pieces. Literally, we have the shield here and we have the weapons, we have the skirt piece, everything. But like, look, I know that this is a 20 year old kit, but it's a uh, super bendable, super fragile. I'm anticipating having to do a lot of work on this as we're doing it. Here's a PC joint. They did not separate them as they do with other kits. It's literally just one giant PC joint. Runner, here are our heavy duty mechanical pieces. Look at this. Tell me that doesn't look, does that not look just a little bit overwhelming? This is gonna be fun. So let's get to how chonky those feet are. Like, are you, th that's, that is insane to me. There's the rest of the funnels, the blue part of the funnel, and how big the actual feet are is just, it's blowing my mind. Here is one more runner from our flexible, more metallic joints. The parts that you're gonna see most of the actual gray poking through. This is what these are. Here is our A runner with our beam saber and our multiple injection molds and everything. Super cool. I really like the colors on this. Sometimes the yellows are a little bit too yellow and I kind of like this yellow a lot more, particularly on these older kits. Just some other pieces that I've already obviously been working on already. Just more mechanical pieces and more of the blue pieces. That was definitely for the chest unit. So we have more of the chest unit and the skirt and everything. So yeah, that is it. That is all the runners. That is everything that we have. Seems a little overwhelming. If you guys are not familiar with MGs, uh, I love them. They're awesome. They're way more detailed. They have a lot more gimmicks to them than an HG, anything like that. I am a fan of the older kits that are technically 1-100s. They're technically like I mean, they're master grades, but I am a fan of the RE1100 line. I am a fan of the 1100s, the MGs, just MGs, uh, they are my favorite. I think they look the best. And that's pretty much it. I'm very excited to be working on this. I anticipate having to do a lot of repair work, which might give us a couple of opportunities for learning stuff, which would be really cool. I'm gonna be remaking like my fixing part cement video, things that are a lot easier for people who may be auditory, visual learners, whatever. I'm gonna try and work on them. I'm gonna find the best possible recipe I can and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help. I'm gonna help. Thank you as always for watching guys. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. I danger zone. I swear, I swear. <laughs> I've kind of gotten it back together again, hopefully. Good thing it's an SD Gundam.